Assalamualaikum And salam sejahtera guys My dear students I really hope that you guys are doing well This uh, is a lecture for subject MLT 529 Clinical Lab Management The topic is Decision Making and Problem Solving There are three main topics we are going to cover First, recognize the characteristic of a good decision Second, identify the roles of the human element in the decision-making process And third, explain the steps in making a sound decision First, uh, the big question What is the effect of slow decision-making or indecisiveness? First, we begin by wasting a lot of time if the lab manager or the lab always postponing every day, every day decisions. Unsolved problems get accumulated. Pending reagents, lab results and staffing issues, which finally will lead to disaster by crisis in management, delayed progress, which eventually will ruin the business. Topic 1. Characteristics of a good decision A character of a good decision is first by careful thought and great planning Complete investigation of where and what causes the problems Look for signs and expect for other potential problems that may arise Identify and evaluate alternative solutions Selection of the best Solution can be done by doing in-depth analysis of the available information Should include an effective strategy for implementing the solution Second, timing and setting of priorities Which is crucial in making decisions Second topic, roles of the human element in the decision-making process The human element can tremendously influence the decision-making process by factors including emotions, prejudice, peer pressure, personal interests, and a lot more. These can never be eliminated, but they can be controlled. Then, human factors are not always bad. They should be recognized, considered, and acknowledged. The best way is to turn it into assets Use objective analytical tools to evaluate the situation and allowing the human touch to provide the perspective and context for selection and implementation Topic 3 The final topic Steps in making a sound decision There are 8 general steps Each phase offers the decision maker both a challenge and an opportunity By paying attention to the details of each stage The lab manager can build the framework for choosing the correct course of action The 8 steps First, recognition that there is a problem or need for the manager's intervention Second, investigation and analysis of the cause and extent of the problem Third, Definition of the nature and boundaries of the problem Fourth, identification of alternative solutions Fifth, evaluation of each option within the context of the management plan and objective for the lab Sixth, selection of the best alternative Seven, implementation of the solution And the final steps follow up on the success and progress of the decision and institution of needed modifications Step 1. Recognition Aware that something is wrong and needs the attention of the manager for example a complaint from a doctor or employee of a flag in the quality control data The earlier the problem is recognized the sooner priorities can be set for resolving it a manager needs to be able to recognize a real problem or only a random occurrence. 
step 2 investigation it is first done by gathering information by collecting data interviewing the staff gathering information that may shed light on the nature and the seriousness of the problem and look for the hidden problems the manager should be alert to additional hidden issues that may have contributed to the problem but was not at first readily apparent step 3 definition determining the ex exact extent and boundaries of the problem enables the manager to target the investigation toward specific objective the manager must look beyond the symptoms of the problem and focus on the real issue the manager needs to understand the difference between treating the symptoms and curing the condition a famous words by Steve Jobs clearly explain what is important to define a problem he said if you define a problem correctly you almost have the solution the manager needs to find out what the root of the problem is not just the surface issues or symptoms concerns to make sure you are solving the right problem all the issues and aspects of the question must be determined this includes people, equipment, communication, supplies, and the workflow. For example, in staff absenteeism, some problems resulting from one's own doing, example, mental health reasons or intentions to quit from the company, and some problems resulting from decisions made elsewhere in the organizational hierarchy, which can lead to burnout, unfair information, and favoritism. Step 4. Identification of alternative. The manager needs to determine what solution available to remedy the situation. This can be done by first seek advice from members of the staff or a committee. If seeking advice from members of the staff, the advantage includes faster solutions, but the con it is prone to bias. Assign the committee to recommend solution. They can provide the best ideas, but usually takes too much time and can even be ineffective. Second, we can make a list. The manager should wait until several solutions are collected, then choose. To avoid spending too much time examining each alternative in depth. Step 5. Solution Evaluation We have qualitative and also quantitative tools in doing the evaluation. In qualitative, first we can look for advice. Second, we can use our personal judgment. And third, we can do systematic option review. As for quantitative, we have probability analysis. And second, we can use using computer technology. First, look for advice. By using the experience and insights of other members of the lab. Example first, asking for opinions from others who solve a similar problem. Organizing a committee, seeking consensus from colleagues and co-workers, or delegating the task to staff members. <coughs> Several techniques can be used for collecting suggestions from a group. The techniques that can be used for collecting suggestions from a group are first by brainstorming. Everyone freely throws out ideas for later evaluation without regard for validity. Second, synactics. People with a variety of backgrounds are brought together as a troubleshooting team. Third, nominal grouping. In a highly structured meeting, individuals write down their original ideas and then present them to the group. Group members then vote on and rank order each suggestion secretly 
to discourage peer pressure and encourage creativity. And for the LFI method, it is a modification of nominal grouping. The input and opinions of experts are solicited on questionnaires before the meeting. The results are then discussed and voted on anonymously. The DELFI method is more commonly used in making decisions in which forecasting future events or trends is important. Personal judgment. It is abilities that grow with maturity and experience can be gained. First, informally by life experience. In other words, the similarities and differences of previous experiences with specific duties and demands of the current workplace and profession. Second, formally through academic, technical training and career advancement. Systematic option review. Prior prioritizing each option according to its apparent attractiveness. One of the popular format is T-chart. The problem and proposed solutions are written down at the top of the page and a line is drawn down the middle. The advantages and disadvantages are listed on either side of the T. Often clarifies the opportunities and risks associated with each option and makes the selection process more objective. Probability analysis Measures risk by assigning a value expressed as a percentage to the likelihood of a specific event occurring. Most useful when the manager is faced with choosing between several different options under conditions with a significant risk of uncertainty. An estimate of probability capital P of a certain outcome or event happening is calculated numerically so that it can be compared with other options. For example, a, a flip of a coin has a 50% probability or 0 0.5. Step 5. Solution evaluation using computer technology. First, we have queuing theory. Provides recommendation for the number of staff needed to handle the workload. For example, to determine the average time to process a sample. Second, we have a linear programming, a tool for allocating limited resources among competing needs. Example, to decide is the price of equipment within the lab budget. And third, simulation, designs models to imitate real life condition so the different scenarios can be compared. Example, computer projection of the impact of the length of patient stay in the hospital if CKSO enzymes are run as batch instead of a stat basis. Step 6. Selection. In choosing the best solution, consider the quality, speed, acceptance, and also the value or cost. When a decision is made, it is often wise to discuss it with someone who has considerable problem-solving skills. Step 7. Implementation. A critical step and the most time-consuming. The solution will be useless if not implemented accordingly. Should involve those who are directly affected by the problem. Inspect the details of the decision and develop necessary procedures. Needs participation by all levels of management and employees alike. And the final step, follow up. Not all decision will have the effect that was planned. Consequences from the implementation of the solution should be evaluated. Follow up will show that the task is important and allowing the manager to be better able to predict. For example, if the solution is effective in solving the problem. Here is the required reading for the lecture. And thank you. Guys, uh, please stay home and be safe. Assalamualaikum.